จำขึ้นถ้าคุณมีบทความของพระเจ้าให้ไปดูที่มัทธิวบทที่4ของพระเจ้าในขณะที่เราเตรียมจะเข้าไปประชุมกันในวันที่4Again, we do want to welcome everybody here. We are glad that you're here. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to come out. And I know uh, it, it, it's not one of those things that the Lord appreciates you coming to worship, but it is our obligation. It should be our honor to come and worship God this morning and uh, take that few moments out of our day to come sing these songs of praise and. Get that opportunity to gather around the table and partake of communion. And as we partake of that communion, it gives us an opportunity to remind ourselves of who we are, remind ourselves of what we're supposed to be doing, and and not only that, but it, it keeps us honest. It it puts things in perspective. It's a, a weekly checkup, so to speak, preventive maintenance to keep us on our toes as we remember the cross, remember the death, the burial, the resurrection. As we then we give of our means and remember that what we have is not. Hours, that that we're not really in charge of this world. It's God who's in charge. So as we give back to God, and now as we break the bread of life, as we open up God's Word and learn from it, uh, we are better because of it. So you are blessed to be able to be here today to hear God's Word. Uh, not because I'm presenting it, but because it is God's word, and we're opening that up together. And it's Father's Day, and we appreciate that holiday, and we appreciate our fathers and all that they've done for us and continue to do for us. This is the tenth anniversary that I will be without my father. It's been ten years since he's been gone, and that is uh, that is hard to believe that he, that he's been gone that long. And and still, you know, there there are still those times where, uh, and if you've lost your father, you know that. That you you want to just pick up the phone and you think oh I need to call dad to tell him that or I want to I want to call dad and say this and you just out of habit out of instinct and then you think oh man he's not there but he really is and the real father that we have is our our godly father and it's 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 great to know that we can pray to our godly father that we can go to him we don't have to pick up the phone but just as we sang that last song i was able to, to pray to my godly father my heavenly father i was able to to ask him some things and solicit his his love and his grace and his mercy just a few moments ago and say be with me as i as i present your message this morning forgive me of my faults and no That I'm not a perfect person. Give me your, give me your grace, mercy. Give me your peace, and and help me present this message in a way that's going to affect people. That's going to, you know, prick the hearts of people, and and just the opportunity to be able to talk to our Father like that, knowing that He's never far away from us. That he, He's right here. That's that's an awesome aspect that we have that, that a lot of people don't have. And we appreciate that opportunity to be able to go to our fathers. So we honor our fathers today, as we look at Father's Day. Now, in Matthew chapter four, the, the reading that Eddie did just a few moments ago, it really—it's not going to have anything to do with the lesson per se. But but I want you to see because as we look at lessons, the illustrations that Jesus uses sometimes are—I don't want to say gender specific. But it seems like maybe they relate more to men. You know, there are illustrations that that I can use or that I hear that really pique my interest a little more. I was talking to someone that recently responded, and and when I asked them what 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 pricked your heart, and they they said it was an illustration that was used in the gospel meeting. Because that illustration was something; it was a great illustration. But that specific illustration really meant something to them. It really hit home with them that that these sermon illustrations and stories that that we use sometimes they're they're specific to us. And I think Jesus was very good at using these illustrations, parables. Sometimes you might want to call them as we used them. And although they were used for everybody, they weren't gender specific. Sometimes they were picked up on, I think, a little bit more by our gender. 
I think when Jesus uses this, illust- this statement here, not really an illustration, but when He uses this in Matthew chapter 4, when we're looking there again, verses 18, when He's calling these disciples, verse 19, And He said to them, These men that were fishermen, follow Me, and I will make you fishers of men. Well, I think when he said that fishers of men, those men that were in that boat with those nets, they understood what he meant. Maybe they didn't understand completely what he meant, but at least they understood the concept to an extent that it intrigued them. Maybe a little more than what maybe some of the women might have thought at the time. And they wanted to know more about it. You can look over in Matthew chapter 13. And you can look in chapter 13, verse 1. you got the parable of the sower. Now, I'm not saying women don't plant. I'm not saying women don't farm, because they do. But sometimes, maybe, maybe even for us today, that might be a little more gender noteworthy to say that maybe sometimes some of the men might understand that a little more. And ladies, I I don't want to discredit you at all because you are amazing and you are wonderful. And, And really what I'm saying is really a discredit to us men because us men, we have attention spans that are about the size of English peas, you know? You know, we we don't have very much attention span. You know how we are. We can be talking about something or you can be talking to us and carrying on a conversation with us and then all of a sudden we're like that that dog in the movie Up, you know? We're like, oh, look at that. Oh, did you see that? And totally unrelated. And our, our, our total focus can shift at the drop of a hat. And we can squirrel. That's what it was, wasn't it? Squirrel. We can be totally oblivious to something. And our, our, our whole focus shift at the drop of a hat. Because our attention spans are so small. So I want to look at something maybe a little more gender specific. I want to use an illustration today for the men. Now the ladies can get something out of it, yes. But I want to look at something today that is a little more noteworthy for the men. So I got to thinking, what could I use? What illustration could I use that would help men understand, that would help us men, that would hold our attention a little more? Okay? Well, sports, you know, that's overdid. We could use sports. Sports are over, that's overdone all the time. And then you got automotive things. You could, you could use automotive things. And that, that really is, that's a little tricky because a lot of people don't understand those things. I'm for one of them. I don't understand those things. And then I thought, well, you know, you could use, you know, Sports Illustrated swimsuit ish. No, no, that's wrong. I can't do that at all. That won't work. So what could I use that men would bond with and understand. Go ahead, Matt. Duct tape. (laughs) Duct tape. And I just noticed something. The the font that I have, I don't think I installed it up on there on that laptop. So the font looks may look different from what I have. I hope it all fits because it was a duck taunt, a duck taunt, a duck. See, I told you, duck tape font that looked really neat. But I don't I don't, I don't think it's installed on that computer, so it may not look a little good. Uh, and I wish I had a roll of duct tape up here. But I, you know, I went to look for some duct tape once before at Dollar General. You know, the regular kind of duct tape, the manly silver duct tape, and all they had was zebra print, hot pink, and I wasn't about to bring some of that stuff up here, because that then I would be a laughing stock. But duct tape, you know, we men, we know duct tape, don't we? I mean, duct tape has all kinds of uses. And a little, a little history, it was designed for the military, and what I almost spelt it D-U-C-K, but I knew that if I did, a lot of you guys would say, no, no, that's wrong, it's not duct tape. But actually, it was at the beginning. It was D-U-C-K. It was duct 
tape. Because when it was in, created for the military, they called it duct tape because of the water-resistant capabilities that it had. It was an olive green kind of drab color that they used, you know, in the military during the World War II, I believe it was. And it was used for that to be waterproof. They would seal up their ammunition boxes. And they used, they called it duct tape because it would repel water. And, and maybe even because of the, the, the duck amphibian, um, amphibious, um, what do they call it? <laughs> the vehicle, yeah, the, the amphibious vehicle that they used because it had something to do with that. They could use it with that. So you know, it started out with that, and then when it came over here commercial and they started using it in air conditioning and heating work, they would call it duct tape. And then maybe uh, that company in Oregon went to duck and, well, you know the rest of the story with that. But it is, we call it duct tape today. And it's used for all kinds of things. I want to show you a few things that it is used for. Ties. Did you know that? You can make a tie out of duct tape. That's pretty original. You can, you can use it. See, I'm going to hold your attention today. You could use that to make a tie. And then this one is used right here. That right there. <laughs> now that actually works because we had a men's basketball game when Braden was first born. And Ben Cackleman did this when Hope was working one night. And that worked for Braden while we played basketball one night. And he was fine when you got home, wasn't he? Yeah, see? So we can do that. And then you've got a car. And I first looked at that. We used to have a car like that. And I thought, well, that's just a... a reg no, that's... That looks like paint, but that's duct tape to cover up the paint job. You can't tell, can you? See, kids, duct tape is awesome. You can use it for all kinds of things. And I'm going to show you some spiritual aspects of duct tape in a minute. All right, keep going. And then you can make suits out of it. Doesn't that look like Russell? Doesn't that look like Russell? That looks like Russell, doesn't it? You can make suits out of it. But go on to the next slide. I want to... See, it's not going to... It's not good. The fonts aren't going to work right today. But we'll, that's all right. We'll, we'll understand the, the principle of it. I want to show you some things, some biblical principles that we can use with duct tape to kind of make a spiritual application to. When you look at duct tape, duct tape sticks to the main thing. And that's what its purpose is, isn't it? When you use duct tape, you want it to stick to the main thing. And that's what it does. So while you got your Bibles out... Look up this passage with me. Go and look at John chapter 15. I think I have this one on the screen. We'll be able to see this one. John chapter 15, verses 4 and 5. Now, Joe used this passage a couple weeks ago in our gospel meeting about abiding in the vine. Abide in me and I in you as the vine cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, that's Jesus. You are the branches, that's us. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Now we've seen this passage over and over and we've, we've, we read this passage and we understand what it means. It's the, I am the vine, you're the branches. Jesus is the vine and we as the branches must be attached to the vine. Well, that word abide, as we looked at a few weeks ago, another definition for that word abide is this. To stay in a given place. Well, guys, if you're going to use duct tape, that's the whole point of using duct tape, isn't it? You want to use the duct tape to put something to stay in a given place. You don't want it to move. You want it to stick to the main thing. Jesus says, I'm, I'm the main thing here. You stick to me. You stay in this place. You abide in this place. And if you abide in this main place, things work. It works. 
just a few nights ago, they had um, on one of the cable channels, they had Apollo 13. And, and I had forgotten this, but uh, on Apollo 13, on that mission that, that went horribly wrong and they were able to make it home, you know, they used duct tape. They used duct tape to make a carbon dioxide filter so that they could survive. And it stuck to hold that if it did not, if it would not have held, that they would not have survived. See, if it's used correctly and if it sticks to the main thing, it works effectively. Jesus says, abide in me. Stick to me. And it works like it's supposed to. It's like a machine. You can bear fruit because you're receiving the nutrients, you're receiving the things that you need from me. I am the vine, you're the branches. I'm soaking up all the stuff and I'm pushing it out to the branches, to the, to the furthest branch out there. As long as you're connected to me, you can, you can get it. You can, you can reach it as long as you're connected to me. And once you're connected to me, what happens? You bear fruit. It's designed to stick to the main thing, to stay put. But if you sever that, if you separate yourself from that, if you fall off, what happens? Well, the passage tells us that you're thrown into the fire. When we cease to stick, we'll burn. Philippians chapter 3. The next slide there, Matt. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining toward what lies ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. See, that the one thing I do, I forget what lies behind and I strain toward what lies ahead. The goal, the upward call of God in Christ. Duct tape is designed to stick to the main thing. With so many other things going on in our lives, men, it's very easy to get distracted. It's very easy to get distracted with our finances. It's very easy to get distracted with work. It's very easy to get distracted with, with so many other things going on. But our job, God says, your job is to make sure that you stick to the main thing. You stick to abiding in that vine. That upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And if you do that, it works. The second thing, I know it's going to be hard for you to see, but duct tape is strong, but it's flexible. Isn't it? I mean, you can, you can take duct tape and, and you can bend it and move it and, and put it in all sorts of different shapes. And you can make it fit into different areas. And it'll hold because it's strong, but it's, it's flexible. It was designed to be that way. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. It says to put on the whole armor of God to, that be strong in the Lord. That we are to be strong as men. And God is very clear about how we are to be as men. That we are to be strong. You know, strong. And, and, and even... Look in this next verse here um, that's on the screen. Even in this passage of 1 Corinthians, Paul says, Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men. Be strong. That's how men are supposed to act. Be strong. But sometimes we take this, this word strong and we use it in the wrong way. Sometimes we think of strong as authoritative and, and powerful and massive and big and pushing our weight around. You know, I've seen some strong guys in the weight room. I've seen some strong guys go in the weight room and they can, they can push their weight around and they can lift tons of weight. And, but but that's, not, that's, not, that's not the strength that God wants. 
God doesn't want a father who comes around and says, I'm the boss and you do what I want. God doesn't want an elder to come into the church and say, I'm in charge of this church and you do as I say because I'm strong. It's not what he wants. But God says, act like men. Be strong. So what's he saying? Look at the passage here. Now, I'm not sure I put it on the screen. Look at the passage here. Go to Ephesians 6, 4. I know I don't have this one on the screen. Remember what Paul tells, how he tells the, the, the church there at Ephesus to, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother. You remember how he says that? But then he also says a specific word to fathers. Look at what he says here in verse 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Other versions, bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Man, how do you think it would be? And some of you men had fathers like this. How do you think you would react if you went home and, and, and your dad said everything he said? He said in that gruff voice. And he always says, I'm the boss and you do this just because I'm telling you to. And I'm straight. He pushed his weight around just because he was dad. And he disciplined you just because he was dad. Not because he might have had good reason to, to correct you, but just because he was dad. And God said, discipline. And God said, be the boss. And God said, be strong. And God said, I'm in charge. Does that not provoke anger? But see, when you, when you read words like nurture, admonition, those words, they speak volumes of strength, don't they? You know, some of my favorite movies, you, you know the, the Rocky movies? I love those movies. You know, Rocky, that's... Was Rocky always the strongest guy that, that would get in the ring? You remember when he fought the Russian? The Russian was the strong... Hey, these were real movies. These actually happened. They weren't movies. These were real, right? When he fought... Drago, that was his name, wasn't he? That guy was much stronger than Rocky, right? And remember when he got in the ring, how Rocky showed his strength? How did, how did Rocky show his strength? A lot of people thought he was stupid because he kept taking the punches, didn't he? He kept getting hit over and over and over again. And when he kept getting hit, what did he keep doing? He kept getting up. Sometimes strength is being able to put up with. Sometimes being strong is being able to endure and not throwing the weight around, right? Sometimes you can show your strength by endurance and not just how much you can lift. Not just how big a muscles you got. Marathon runners are pretty strong because they can endure so much more. Who's stronger, a power lifter or an, or an endurance runner? Well, I don't know. It's all in how you define strong. Look at this passage here, 2 Timothy 2. The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome. Okay? but kind to everyone, able to teach. Now look at this, man. Patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth and that they may continue their senses at escaping from the snare of the devil after being... You see that strength, the flexibility... You see that you have the strength to do things, but 
but you're able to maneuver around a different way. See, just as duct tape is strong and flexible, God wants us as men to be strong. But we need to be flexible. And sometimes strength is controlling our tongue. Strength is, is self-control. Oh, that's where the real strength is, isn't it? I think I'd come more bench pressing a thousand pounds than I would control in myself sometimes. Wouldn't you? Strong, but flexible. The third aspect duct tape is good as long as it doesn't get exposed to the wrong elements. Man, I hate looking at that. I'm sorry. It looks so good on mine, but it's good as long as it doesn't get exposed to the wrong elements. You know, I, I like to, I, I, I'm like my dad, I like to piece things together. Leah calls it jerry-rigging because my dad's name was Jerry. And I'll use a lot of duct tape. And I'll be outside on my lawnmower and I might use some duct tape to hold something together. If I drop it and it gets grass on it, it won't stick because it's got leaves or grass or dirt on it. And you can't pull, the, you can't pull that back off, can you? You might as well wad up, throw it away, and get a new piece. Because as soon as it gets the trash on it, it's, it's not going to work as good. It's not going to work right. I mean, it works as long as it's clean and pure, but as soon as you get exposed to these wrong elements, as soon as you get exposed to the wrong kinds of things, it loses its usefulness. That's the way it is with us too, guys. Men, that's the way we are. As, as soon as we get exposed to the wrong elements, I don't care how good we are as elders, deacons, ministers, men in general, fathers, supervisors. I don't care how good we are. When we expose ourselves to the wrong elements, we break down and we don't work effectively. Go back to 1 Timothy. And, and I'm not sure which of these verses I have on there. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Do I have that one on there? Yes, I do. 1 Timothy 2. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use. Set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So, flee youthful passions, pursue righteousness, love, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the name of the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. Men, as we look to see what we can do to be better men, better fathers, better grandfathers, better young Christian men, better godly men, we need to be careful that we don't expose ourselves to the wrong things. Because we may be strong and flexible, and, and we may be able to stick to the, 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 the correct thing, and we may be able to abide in the, in the vine. But as soon as we get dropped and let the world let the stuff of the world stick to us the pornography and the greed and the elements that the world has we're just not as strong anymore and we use our usefulness the passage here tells us make sure you stay pure you flee the youthful lust. And then notice this at the end. You may not have even read this part of the verse in this way. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know they only breed quarrels. Foolish, ignorant controversies. I wonder if those are some of those arguments that we have, maybe over football teams. 
of those arguments we have over which is better, Ford or Chevy, they only make us mad. They just breed quarrels among us. Sometimes we get so caught up, we, we, we get sticking to the wrong thing. It can ruin our integrity, our reputation, character, our health. Spiritually, if damages, we expose ourselves to the wrong things and it makes us use, useless. One more thing here. Don't think. When you use duct tape, don't think. It's good for a time, but don't think you are the permanent solution. Duct tape is good for a little while, but it will not fix it permanently. You are the duct tape. You are not the permanent solution. You are not the answer, the end of all things, the end all to your children. It is your job to hold them in place, men, to get them to Christ. That's your job. It's your job to point them to Jesus. Duct tape is used to fix things, but it's only intended to be temporary. You can't do it all alone. We cannot be everything to everyone. We're only there to point people in the correct direction. Paul said on two occasions in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, chapter 11, verse 1, imitate me as I imitate Jesus. Follow me as I'm a follower of Jesus. Do what I do as long as I'm doing what Jesus does. Because our job only is to hold things in place temporarily because there's only one thing that can really fix it for good. There's only one thing that can hold everything together for good. And that's in this last verse here. Do I have one more? I may not. I don't. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 17. In Him... In Christ, who has the preeminence, He holds all things together. He is the one that holds all together. So I hope I was able to hold your attention this morning. I hope you were able to, to listen. I hope you didn't I hope you didn't try to count the boards in the ceiling again this morning. 432. I hope you were able to focus. I hope you were able to look, men, and I hope you were able to think, you know what? That's a lesson that can apply to me. And as you look at your life, fathers, as you look at your life, men, and even ladies, it, the lesson applies to us all. But as you look at your life, if there's things amiss, see, the best thing about duct tape is that if a piece gets messed up, what can you do? You throw it away, and you just pull off a new one. The best thing about the Christian life that we have today is that we have the grace, the love, and the mercy of Jesus Christ that if we mess up, we can just pull this layer off that we have and throw it away and start with a new one. And we can do that every single day. We can do that every single hour if we need to. As long as we're sincere and as long as the Lord tarries is coming, as long as we need it. Because God is a loving God and He cares about us. And He's a Father and He wants the best from us. So look at your life this morning and if your life is out of whack, if it's not working right... Look and see if you're abiding in the vine. If you're not a member of the body of Christ, if, if you're not sticking to the main thing, maybe you, need, maybe you need to be stuck there this morning. Maybe you need to be applied to that blood through baptism, having your sins washed away, confessing His name, repenting of sin, dying to self through that baptism and becoming alive unto God. Maybe, maybe you have. Maybe you've just gotten... Maybe your, your life's got stuck to the wrong elements and you need to, to rip off the old and put on a new one. And you know what? Anytime you rip off the old, it hurts, doesn't it? It hurts. 
And some of ourself comes off with it too, doesn't it? But it always feels better when you put the new one on. Look at your life. And if there's things out of line, especially men, fathers, let's fix it for the sake of our families as we stand and sing the invitation song this morning. Oh,